All right, Hever. Now, it's interesting because I don't know, in America this week is Yeshiva week. So a lot, a lot of people are away. And, um, and here, of course, there's no Yeshiva week here. We go straight through. But it was not just it was snowing last night, but it was thundering and lightning very, very close to my building. The building was shaking. When it was the thunder, the, the windows were rattling. It was wonderful. Great bracha inspiration. Okay. So we, in, we are studying uh, uh, Parak Tzadik Aleph 91 in Sahilim. And I was privileged this week. Ramona's here. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. And she came over to visit. And so, and she's trying to get a flight home back to England. I think the airports, I don't know what's going on with the airports, but um, that was fun. So I'm meeting, I'm meeting you, uh, you know, piecemeal, one by one, which is really nice. Okay, we are studying the parak of Tehillim that's about protection, that's about Emuna and Bitachon trusting Hashem and believing in Hashem. And that's about, and it's a conversation that Hashem slash Moshe Rabbeinu slash David HaMelech is having with us. Because remember that this parak of Tehillim originated with Moshe Rabbeinu and then David HaMelech adapted it and put it into his Tehillim and Hashem gave him credit for it, both of them. And it's a prayer that you're going to see today that Hashem talks back to us. Hashem responds to us in this Tehillim. And you say this Tehillim whenever you need protection. You know that it's in the Kriyashma, and we say it at night by Kriyashma Lamita. We say this on Hanukkah when we want to remind us ourselves that we needed protection from the Greek forces and from the people who are all traitorous. And we say this parak of Tehillim when we want to bless someone that they should have protection. If a person's going on a journey, if a person's having a surgery, if a person is going into court, any of these things, you say this parak of Tehillim. The Baal Shem Tov used to say this parak of Tehillim seven times on Hanukkah. On Hanukkah, candle lighting, he would say this parak of Tehillim seven times. And we know that that's a big deal when they say something seven times, it's like a showing it's highlighting its importance. So let's see, I think that we were, we finished Pasuk Zion, is that correct? Our Hever who will take notes, Pasuk Zion, yeah? We finished that? Somebody show me a thumbs up. Let's see, any thumbs up? Yes, we did. Yes, That's where we okay. are today. Yeah. Oh, sorry, so my thumb was up. My thumb was up. Okay. But you wanted it printed on the screen. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. I'm glad to say hi to everybody. Hi, to especially to the Yerushalmim and to the Eretz Yisraelika. Chanaz is it snowing in uh, in Yericho? I don't think so. I don't think it snows in the south. No. <laughs> Well, it snowed here in Yerushalayim Yerkodesh. Simon Devar, what about you? Snow in Zamona? No, 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 no snow, but very, very cold. Cold, and, wow. and someone came last night, just in time, and picked my mazgan, so I have it. <laughs> wow, Baruch Hashem, you have your mazgan fixed. The mazgan is the heater air conditioning system that we, that we have here. Okay, so now we're gonna do, part, now, again, just a review. In the beginning of the parak, we're, we're told that Hashem is telling us. That Sorry, there are some latecomers because if I don't remind everybody every week, I didn't realize that on my one group, I hadn't resent it out. So there's some people joining because I just resent it out. Somebody said, what? No, share. So I'm sorry about it. It's okay. I'll tell you the truth. Today to me feels like, you know, it's a snow day, even though um, I don't have to go out of my house to learn with, with you ladies but it feels so much like a snow day. So if people come in late, that's also okay. <laughs> okay, everybody's, you're, you're, you're relating to Yerushalayim Yerkodesh and to Tzfat. 
Let's see, is Devora on? We want to see what's happening in Tavaria. No? Okay. Okay, so we said that we're talking about the protection of Hashem. And then Hashem, we're in 91, chapter 91. And we say we're in the beginning, we are saying that we are committed to believing in Hashem. And we are saying that Hashem is our guard and our protection. And we, we learned last week that whenever we have a verb in Tehillim, that's future tense, it's a blessing and it's also a prediction. So it means Hashem should protect you and Hashem will protect you. That's what Moshe Bain is saying. So when we, when, we, when we repeat his words, it's as if Moshe Rabbeinu is on our left, you know, on our shoulder. David Melch is on the other shoulder. And they're both, we're repeating their words and they're both saying to us, Hashem will protect you. Let's continue. This is a very, very, very famous pasuk. The whole parak of Tilm is very famous, but this is one of those strong ones. The prayer is that you should look with your eyes and you should see Hashem paying back the wicked. And that's a very big blessing that we really look forward to seeing, meaning a lot of times we get confused. How come the, well, how is it that the wicked succeed and the righteous don't? And not just that, but the wicked seem to, um, I learned a new word this week. Maybe you know it. I, I just learned it. So I'll share my new word with you and my ignorance of the past. There's something called gaslighting. I just learned it this week. It means when somebody is trying to make you feel crazy, you're normal and they're evil and they're trying to make you feel like you're crazy. So um, I don't know how that word came back. I, I don't know what the root of it is, but a, a wicked person tries to do that. They try to... Um, not only harm a good person, but they also try to make it seem as if they are righteous and the good person is evil. So we, and, and, the, and the good person is frustrated by that. So Zavon HaMelech slash Moshe Beinu says, you should only look with your eyes, you should look with your eyes, and and you should see the payback that God pays back the evil people. That means you should see it, you will see it, and if you open up your eyes, then you will, I don't know from that movie, I just learned it yesterday from a book, from a, 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 mag, a magazine article. Uh, but thank you for that. Um, was that what the movie was about? Some guy, some person trying to make another person think that they're crazy? Is that where they got that from? Ah, okay, thank you. So, um, you know, when people try to do that, just to, on the side, I know someone who that happened to, and it was so hard for her to realize that she's, that she's healthy, that she was conditioned. Anyway, you should see the downfall of your enemies. You should see how Hashem pays back the enemy, mida connected mida, measure for measure, because that's the greatest vindication to a person. When they see that there's an evil, and the evil's being repaid, midah for midah, measure for measure, according to what they did. The whole parsha. this is the parsha that we're in now, Parshas Mishpatim, is talking about how Hashem has an incredible system of justice that Hashem himself does. And, um, and he actually repays us. If we're going through something, then we have to know that it's payback from something that we've done. And if somebody else is hurting us, we have to know that we don't know what that's. We have to just emuna that Hashem knows what he's doing and Hashem is doing the right thing. That's this week's parsha, parsha's mishpatim. Parsha's mishpatim in the, in the Torah, the, the Zohar Kodesh says, the, the mystical literature tells us, Rabbi Shem Bayochai tells us that our parsha is um, talking about uh, uh, reincarnations and that things that happen to people that seem to be so mysterious are really because of a previous life so you should know that you're going to see, you should, you, you should see the, the repayment of the evil people. And you should see how it's mida connected mida. Ki ata Hashem machsi. Hashem, you are my uh, refuge. El yon samta meonecha. Even though you put, now there's two ways to interpret this. Even though you're so high 
and you've put your presence or your home, so to speak, in Shamayim, so to speak, what does that mean? It means Hashem is above and beyond our imagination. But nevertheless, I'm hiding underneath you. I'm hiding in your wings, in your hug. It's like, a right? Uh, you're hugging me and you're protecting me. So even though Elion Samtamonecha, you made your Maon, your Maon is your home. You made your Maon Elion so high up. Nevertheless, I'm still trusting you. Another interpretation is Elion means Hashem. Like Melech Elion, we say in Yantif Tavani. The, the, the above one. Ah, uh, okay. 91, we're learning Perak 91 and we're on Tzadik Aleph and we're on Pasuk Tess, nine, verse 9. So Hashem, you are the Elion, you're above and beyond everything. And, and still, you, you dwell with us. You, you, you're here. That's what we say every single day in Shemona Esrei. Every day in Shemona Esrei, you say this. Elokei Avraham, Elokei Yisrael, Hakel, Agadol, Agiva, Ranora. We're using expressions of, the, of describing Hashem as Gadol, great, Gibor, strong, Nora, awesome. Kel Elyon, that's the word we're using here. The, he's elevated above everything. And yet, Gomel Hasadim Tovim. And yet, you just do me favors. Kone Hakol, you own everything. You remember my grandparents. Maybe go and leave Nevenayim, and you bring the redemption for us, their, their descendants. Leman Shmo, because of your holy name, which is something I can't understand, and Be'ahava, because you love us. So it's the same idea that Hashem is so above and beyond. He's so transcendental, and yet He's so imminent. He's so present in our life. And that's the game that we play of thinking Hashem is Avinu and Malkenu. Malkenu, He's our. King, he's above and beyond. He's Melech, Malchem, Amlachim, Hakadosh, the Holy One, Baruch Hu. And yet he's Avinu, Daddy, Papa, Abba, Tata. That's the back and forth that we're always in relationship with the, with our Creator. Lo Now listen. Now this is David Melech Moshe Rabbeinu and Hashem speaking to us. And when we say these words, we're mimicking them. And it says in the Gemara that it's as if they're speaking. It's like as as if um, it's as if their our their mouth. It says in the Gemara that their mouth talks in the grave. What does that mean? It doesn't mean the mouth you know moves. It means we speak. They speak through us. We speak their words. It's as if, you know, it says when a person loves another person, they kiss mouth on mouth. The rucha berucha, the, the breath of the, the breath, right? That's what it says in, in Kabbalah. It says that that's how it is when we, were, when we say words of Tehillim, of Davon HaMelech, of Moshe Rabbeinu, because this is written by both of them. It's as, if, it's as if they're kissing us, so to speak, on a spiritual level. That's why people love to say Tehillim. People don't even understand why do they love to say till they don't even understand it. It's because it's as if David Melch, who's Mashiach, David Malka Mashiach. We're waiting for him. David Malka Mashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu is a Mashiach. Moshe Rabbeinu was the first Melech. Okay, so we're waiting for them. So when we say their words, we're like connecting to them on a level, on a certain level. So Hashem, you, I trust you. You're, I'm hiding in you. And so Hashem says, Lo you're not going to have anything bad happen to you. Nega lo There's not going to be any nega. And nega means an affliction. No affliction will come into your house, into your ohel, into your, into your tent, into your environment. Now listen, we see that, we see that nega could also mean a plague. It could also mean a pandemic. It could also mean a, a sickness. And we see that, right, it spreads, we have to say, no, it's not going to come. It's not going to come close to you. When you're karov to Hashem, when you're close to Hashem, then all evil forces back off. When you're karov, then they don't get karov to you. So what happens when you feel like you're not karov? Titkarvi, come close and say this, talk to Hashem, just talk to Hashem all day long. 
And if anything happens, justify it, Hashem, you know what you're doing. But this is, we're asking for protection. We don't want any negative things to happen to us. And we also know, I told you this funny story. I'll say it again because I, it's so, I know the person who said it. And it's so, uh, it's just so ironic. So one of the big rabbis that I know, he has a sister who's a little bit nervous. And so when the whole Corona thing started, she got really nervous and she's saying, he said this in public, so I'm gonna, just gonna repeat it. Uh, she got nervous, what's gonna be? It's so scary, it's so scary. It's so terrible, like what's gonna, this is a couple of years ago, when it was in the beginning when nobody really knew what it was and when people were much more frightened. And so he said to her, okay, so what happens? You'll die. The worst thing that happens is a person dies. It's not so terrible. Like that's a person who is, you know, um, it's a different perspective because we're not afraid to die. We don't want to die. We want to live to see Mashiach Sitkane and say, amen, amen, now in this body that we're in right now for us, for our whole families, for everybody that we know in this world, in this life, as we are right now, we don't want to ever die. Amen, amen. But in the past, people died. So, all right, so what happens? You go straight to your neshama never dies. You just have a different consciousness. It's like you graduate. So you're trying to calm her down by saying, all right, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You'll die. Of course, she hung up the phone and screamed at him. I don't know however she reacted. But the bottom line is, this is a prayer. Lo sunen nechara. Hashem, I'm saying these words. I want Dovah Melch to bless me with these words. I want Moshe Ben to bless me with these words. I want you, Hashem, Isbar, to bless me with these words. And here's the Pasuk. Now we're on 11. Hashem is now commanding angels. We're going to see soon what that means. Angels to, um, for you. You're going to, everybody's going to get their angel. To guard you, to watch you, to protect you. And wherever you go, Hashem is sending angels to you now. Hashem is going to make you angels. And they're going to be with you. They're going to sit with you. They're going to be on your shoulder, your right side, maybe. Angels, protective angels. The angel Raphael, the angel Michal, the angel Gabriel, if you need him also. All the angels that we don't know their names of or that we're not allowed to say their names. The first, the angels that I just said, we're allowed to say their names because they're, they're so big that we can't in any way uh, be harmed by saying their names. There are lower level angels that if we say their names, we could be harmed by saying, so we don't say those names. Hashem is going to make you angels and they're going to protect you. So many people say the, just this pasuk when they go out the door, when they leave the house, or they say the next couple of psukim. Everyone has, um, everybody knows that before you leave the house, you kiss the mezuzah, right? Everybody knows that. And my, the, my mother taught us from her mother, you kiss three times, three times, and you say a phrase, that's how you say. My mother taught me that. That's what she said. Her mother said, her mother said, all the way back to I don't know where. That means Hashem should protect me from all bad things. And we kiss three times as we say. Right? Okay, now, that was what my mother taught me. She should have a glyph of the my friend and, and Rebetzin and teacher, the Ribbon to Rebetzin taught me that after you say that, you keep your hand on the mezuzah and you daven, whatever you need. You're going to pay the bills. Hashem, thank you. I can go to pay the bills. You're going to get, go, go shopping. Please, Hashem, thank you that I'm going shopping. I have money to pay. Let me make sure I have money to pay. Let me get all the things I need. Keep your hand on the mezuzah and fila and ask Hashem for requests, whatever you need. And she would like, after every request, give another kiss, another kiss. She used to, when the, when the Riddens of Abbotson used to go anywhere, when she would leave the house, she would have to leave a few minutes early because she stood by the mezuzah and Davin, like it was a procedure to, for her to leave the house. So some people say this pasuk, by the mezuzah, after you leave, before you leave. Kimalach HaVitzavalech, Hashem should command us, angels, Lishmor HaBechol Derechecha. Now, there's another phrase, there's another pasuk in, in, in Tehillim that says, Bechol derechecha da'ehu. Bechol derechecha da'ehu. Uh, it's a Mishlei. 
you have to know Hashem and you should know Hashem in all of your ways. Whatever you do, it should be with consciousness of Hashem. And then Hashem will make your life straight. So here, Hashem is going to command angels to you to guard you in all of your ways. So remind yourself that you should be thinking about Hashem you should always think about Hashem, whatever you're doing, whatever you're doing. Learning, davening, cooking, cleaning, shopping, walking, meditating, breathing. Whatever you're doing, wherever your path takes you, know Hashem, think about Hashem. Da'ehu doesn't just mean to know Hashem, it means to think about Him, to attach yourself to Him, to daven to Him. So here, Hashem should watch you. And now we're going to see a whole bunch of levels of protection. What kind of levels of protection do I want? So the first thing he's going to do is he's going to um, carry you. These angels that Hashem is sending to you are going to levitate you. They're going to carry you on their hands so that that your foot shouldn't shouldn't uh, get hurt by a misstep, by a rock. So imagine that idea. There was some, one, one of the people in the Gemara, who was it, one of the Tanaim, that when his mother, they, his, mother um, his mother was a little bit nasty to him. But anyway, and then her shoe broke, something like that. I forgot exactly the story. And she had to walk from someplace to someplace. So this Tana, Tanaim is one of the great rabbis of the Gemara. He put his hands under his foot that he, what he, that she shouldn't, her foot shouldn't touch the ground. She was just, I think she had just given him a little bit of a, whatever she was. Anyway, but to show how much he loved her and honored her, he put his hands under her foot and she walked on his hand, like he held her foot. He went on the ground and he walked with her. So that the angels, Hashem sending us angels, and they're going to protect us from the ground, for we shouldn't stumble. Now, clearly, this has nothing to do with stubbing your toe and your feet and all of that. No, no, no. It's talking about that Hashem will, if a, uh, we're asking for protection, Hashem will protect us from, he'll, he'll send us barriers, to, mechitzas, to protect us. Did you ever do a barrier? Um, did you ever make like around yourself a meditative barrier, a meditative uh, protective device. I spoke about this last week, um, that you can imagine psukim. You can imagine psukim. Let's say Shema Yisrael. We know how to use the power of our imagination to imagine. You can imagine the Pasuk Shema Yisrael surrounding you like in a spiral cord of protection. Say it, you have to say the Pasuk. And just imagine that it's, it's creating an energy that's surrounding you of protection. Because it's Hashem. Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad. Hashem is our God. Hashem is only, there's only, there's only Hashem. That thought protects you. You could imagine it surrounding you with, with, a, with, an, with a, a force, a, a, a protective force. Or Anochi Hashem Elokecha, you can imagine the first of the commandments, I am Hashem, your God. Asher Hosei Sicha, Meretz Mitzrayim, I took you out of Mitzrayim, your base of Adim. And that protects us. Hashem is telling us the first commandment. I took you out of Mitzrayim. I'm involved in your life, in the details. I'm the God who created the universe, and I'm involved in your life, in planet Earth, of the, of the 8 billion humans in planet Earth, and of the trillions of animals, plants, things in planet Earth. I am involved in your life. Hashem knows us. It's an awesome thought. That's just one thought is an awesome thought because every one of us has a personal connection to God. But then we think, oh, the other person also has a personal connection to God. And the other person also has a personal, and everybody in the neighborhood, and everybody in the country, and everybody in the world. So, that, so Hashem makes protection around us. And he, and he surrounds us. Imagine it in any way you want. A, a protection of like a cocoon of psukim, a protection of energy, a field of energy, a 
a field of glowing light, of holiness. You can imagine the, the coattail wrapped around you. Anything that you want. That's called that he's going to let the angels carry us on their hands so that we sh our foot shouldn't be uh, hurt by stumbling. Now, of course, it has to do with the Eight Sahara also, right? Because what do we need the most protection from? Ourselves and our mind. That's the worst. Exile and, and, and problems are originating in the mind. So we need protection from that. We need, prote we need protection from sad thoughts, from depressing thoughts, from debilitating thoughts, from thoughts of I'm not good enough, Hashem doesn't love me, etc., etc. Those are all thoughts that we need protection from. Those are rocks beneath our feet. They try to pull us down and hurt us. That's the first level. And now there's a second level of protection. Here comes a second level. I'm not going to protect you from your problems. I'm going to let you touch them and deal with them. Al shachal afes and tidroch. A shachal is a lion. There's different names for lions. And a fesen is a nachash, a snake. Different names for snakes. Tirmos, and here they come again. Tirmos, kfir, a kfir is a young lion. And tanin is a crocodile, another snake. What is the second person, person pointing out? I'm not going to make a barrier. No barriers. The first level of protection is when you can't handle this nisayon. You can't ha handle the test. You cannot handle the, the uh, interaction with that difficult person in your life. So Hashem makes a barrier. Hashem barriers you. There's a, there's a distance. You know, the person doesn't come into your life. The nisayon doesn't. The test doesn't come into your life. Whatever. That's called a barrier. That's protective. But the second level, which is a much more curative, um, actually, level is Hashem says, yeah, you're going to step on that lion. Yeah, you're going to step on the snake. You're going to step on it. You're going to touch it. No barriers, no angels. You're going to step on it. But you know what? You're going to crush it and trample it. That means you're going to deal with it. You're not going to be protected, but I'm going to give you so much inner strength that you will you'll destroy the enemy. You won't just be separated from it, but you'll actually have the, you'll destroy it. And because of that, you'll have confidence in yourself. And next time you'll be able to deal with it in a, in a, in a better way. That's this level of protection. And that's scary because who wants to deal with, you know, we would all much rather, um, you know, uh, not have to deal with things. Push it off, ignore it, give it to somebody else. Hashem says, okay, sometimes you need to do that. That's when the angel comes and helps you. But when you're ready, Hashem says, I'm going to make you deal with it and you will succeed. And then after you sigh, the sigh of relief that you feel after you have that, have gone through that and you pass the test, the interaction was appropriate, the, whatever happens, you were able to, to be in control of yourself and in control of the situation, and you, and you acknowledged Hashem when that happens, the sigh of relief that you breathe is much deeper, much more profound, and much more, actually, it healed you. You didn't just avoid something, it healed you. And Hashem does that whenever we're being forced to deal with things. Hashem only gives us to deal with something when we can. And we don't like to hear that, but that's just how it is. Okay. I'll just tell you a funny thing that just happened on my screen. I'll bring, I like to bring into Yerushalayim Yer Kodesh into what's going on here. So, you know, we don't own shovels. I don't know if in England you have shovels. I forgot already. In America, everybody had a shovel. People had shovels in their car. You had a car. Sometimes you had a shovel out the car. They had special shovels to shovel off the snow from the top. Here in Aristotle, nobody has a shovel. So somebody, I popped up on my screen as we're learning together. Um, somebody from the shul is asking, can somebody please come help clean the, they don't even have a word for shovel. 
I mean, they do in the base of Nikdash, but not for snow. Can somebody please help clean out the entrance to the shul? And the, and the guy wrote, it's a segula for being able to walk, which I'm sure he just made that up because we don't have snow. I, don't, I never saw a school of, maybe it is a school of, you clean off the snow in the front of the shul, you'll be able, but he said it's a school of, for every, everybody will be able, you'll be able to walk, meaning you help other people walk, you'll be able to walk. Okay, that's what just happened on my computer, on my thing while I'm teaching you, because here in Israel, the, the, everything stopped, the whole city is closed down. It was only, I don't know, 20 centimeters of snow, max. Here in Harnof, we got about, Maybe I would say 14 centimeters of snow. But in town, they got by the coastal, they measured 20. So the whole city's, that's it. Nobody's out. Nobody's, no cars, a few cars, but no buses, no transport. Nobody goes to school. Nobody goes to work. That's where they're all running to shul to learn the whole day in shul. Okay, so Hashem is going to help us with the, with the rocks. And he's going to help us with the animals, with the snake and the lion. Now, what are snakes and lions, right? Lion, we know, is the Yetzirah. A snake, we know, is the Yetzirah of, of pride, of, right? Because a lion is the king of the beasts, right? So when you're, you have arrogance, when you have a person in your life who's too much fire element, too much uh, controlling, that's the Arye, the lion. The snake is a, is a clear yes to her. Hashem says, I'm going to make you deal with those things. You're going to have in your life times when you have to deal with the yes to her and with high level tests. It's okay. You'll pass. You know why? And now here Hashem is showing us why we're allowed to say these pesukim. And this refers to every single one of us. Because if you, it doesn't refer to you, you would not be in the shir. It says, Ki vi hashak. Now Hashem is speaking to us now. So when we say these words, we're repeating Hashem's words. How do we know Hashem says it? Because Moshe Rabbeinu wrote these words. How does Moshe Rabbeinu know? Because Hashem told him. Because Moshe Rabbeinu is the highest of the prophets. Hashem says, Ki vi chashak, I, the Jewish people wants me. He, a cheshek. A cheshek means, when you have a cheshek for something, it means you want something so deeply. You have like a craving for something. So Hashem, Hashem testifies, ki vi, ki, because bi, bi means Hashem, in me, chashak. The Jewish people have a taiva for God. We crave God. We are, we are addicted to wanting closeness to God. Why are you on the shear if you didn't want to learn about God? And if you don't want to learn how to come close to God, of course you have this person. You're allowed to say this. So you know why? Because that because the person is as chalishing for me, is desirous of me, says Hashem. Afalteyu, I'm gonna save him. I'm gonna make him, I'll rescue him. And now another level, a higher level, a higher level is Asagvehu. Not only am I gonna rescue him or her, but I'm gonna lift her up. Why? Ki yada shemi. Because they know my name. What does that mean? They know my name. Anybody knows Hashem's name? Yud Kevavke. We say how we pronounce it. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean they know my name to pronounce it. It means because the word ladat, the, the word ladat means to be intimate with, to want to connect to, but not just to want to connect like in a superficial way, but to want to connect in the deepest soul level way. That's called, that's called das. Das means when your mind and your consciousness wants to connect to Hashem. Yeah, Hashem says, I'm going to lift him up, lift this Jew up. Why? Because he just wants me. He wants my name. What does it mean Hashem's name? Hashem doesn't, in, we can't imagine what Hashem's essence is. All we can, the best we can do is Hashem's descriptions of himself to us. That's called Hashem's name. I'm going to lift him up. Niskav. I'm going to lift him up. It's a higher level of than saving. Saving is I'll save him. I'll save him because he wants me. He loves me. But then I'll lift him up. Her up. Why? Because she's, she doesn't just want me. She wants to come close to me. She wants to integrate. Somebody has to be muted. She wants to integrate her life in, in a true way. 
as hagvehu, Hashem says these words, ki yad shmi, shmi means God is saying about his own name, we love God. And Hashem says, because we love God, he's going to lift us, elevate us, rescue us. So you say this <coughs> when you need those things. <clears throat> now, he's Yikra'eni. He's going to call, again, we're quoting God, God's words now to us, about us. Could you imagine? Moshe Rabbeinu went up to, went up to Shemaim and he hears God saying these words about the Jewish people. And now we're repeating it. Yikra'eni, says God. He's calling, she's calling out to me. Ve'enayu, I'm going to answer her. Imo anochi b'tzara, achalseyu v'achamdehu. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to say the second part of the, the end of the pasuk first. Achal tseyu, I'm going to strengthen him or free him. And achabdehu, I'm going to lift him up. I'm going to strengthen his neshama because of the kavod in Tehillim means the neshama. I'll also, I'll honor him, but I'll also strengthen his neshama. What does it mean, imo anochi b'tzara? So this is a, a, this teaching of e, these words, imo anochi b'tzara, is a very, very fundamental teaching in Judaism. Judaism 101. And that is on two levels. When a Jew is level number one, when a Jew is suffering, Hashem suffers, so to speak. Of course, Hashem never suffers, right? He doesn't, he doesn't have needs. Hashem in his essence doesn't have, but you know, your first grader comes home from school and she says to you, Mora didn't give me a cookie. So you're in pain for her, even though you have plenty of cookies to give her. And, but you feel bad. Your child was hurt. Your child was embarrassed, was disappointed, was frustrated. That child's feeling is, of course, below your uh, consciousness level. But because you love her so much, you feel her pain. And you know, of course, you don't feel the same pain as her, but you feel pain that she's in pain. So, imo anochi b'tzara. I am with him in his pain. That's what the words mean. Imo, I am with him. Imo anochi, anochi is I am. Imo with him, but b'tzara in his, in her suffering. The word anochi, of course, you're going to remember, is the first word of the Ten Commandments. It means the absolute hashkoch of Hashem, and Hashem is so involved in our life even we're in the lowest places. You know, there's a commentary that says that the word Anochi, which we use as a Hebrew word, because it's in Torah, was also an, an Egyptian word. And Chazal say, God started the Ten Commandments with the word Anochi, which is an Egyptian word for Ani. Why? Because even if we're in a, a lowly place, like we're in Egypt, we're in a lowly place, Hashem says, it's okay, I'm with you there also. I took you out of Egypt. I'm your God, I'm your creator. We juggle these two ideas of Hashem is so niskav, Hashem is so, uh, Hashem is so indescribable, and yet Hashem is not next to me, and I complain to him all the time. And we're allowed to juggle both of those ideas all the time. Hashem is above and beyond my imagination, and Hashem, please make the chocolate chip cookies come out good. What does chocolate chip cookies have to do with Hashem is in his creative, right? That's, a, that's how it works. We're allowed to, we have to do both. We have to hold cup. We have to have both consciousnesses. So, Imo Anochi Batsara, number one, it means Hashem suffers, so to speak, when we suffer. But there's another level that the Baal Shem HaKadosh talks about all the time. And every once in a while, we can actually fulfill this. And he says, whenever anything is happening to you in your life that's uncomfortable, you need parnasa, you need whatever it is that you need. You should know that why did that happen to you is because Hashem wants to show you that that's the chisaron, it's a, it's a lacking in your own life. It's also, so to speak, a lacking in the, in the shrina, in the presence of God in this world. And so if we see that we're going through something and we dive in not just for ourselves, but actually also for the shrina, 
the presence of God in this world. And in fact, if you, if you can like then actually dive in more for the Shekhinah than for yourself. All these people should have a full shleim, or all the names that you're putting on the beds, Rath Hashem should have full shleim. So when we go to that place of I am davening, not just for me, myself and I, but I'm davening for the Kiddush Hashem that is lacking in this world. Because if you have a Jew, whether they're at whatever level they're on, but if there's a Jew in this world that's suffering, that itself is a desecration of God's name. Why? Because we're the Jews who Hashem made a covenant with, Hashem made a contract with, and we are trying our best, and Hashem allowed us to survive exile, and we represent God in this world. That's why, according to many, many tzaddikim, anti-Semitism is really anti-God, that we represent subconsciously or consciously to the Gentile world. We represent God. They don't want to be limited by God's moral morality. And so therefore they're rebelling against God, but you can't punch God in the nose because he doesn't have physicality. So you punch a religious Jew in the nose and that's your way of expressing. That's what Chazal, that's what many rabbis tell us is the root of anti-Semitism. It's an anti-God movement. So Imo Anochi Bitsara, I'm going to try to dive in for the, primarily for the lack of, for Hashem. Hashem wants that every Jew should be wealthy, healthy, well, family, a house, Eretz Yisrael, Torah, Shabbos, loving the mitzvahs. Hashem wants that for every one of us. If any of those things is, is lacking, we have to try to see if we could dive in for Hashem's wish to be fulfilled rather than our little personal need. It's a very high level, and but every once in a while we could do it. Every once in a while we could do it. Like if you see a, a girl who's a little older, she's not yet married. So you say, Hashem, look, the Jewish people were waiting for you so many years, waiting for you so many years. So we want you to be married to us. We want you to attach yourselves to us, to unite with us. And by the way, could you please get, uh, you know, or whatever. That's how you dive in. That's how you dive in. Um, a person is having a hard time with their children. So you say, and uh, they need either they need children or they need muscle with their children or they need haslacha with their children, success with their children. So you can say, please, Hashem, give so and so success and shalom bias with their children. They should make peace together, they should get along together, they should communicate. You could start like that, or you could start on the higher level of Hashem, we are your children, and so many of us are so far away from you, and I know that that hurts you so much. Please be makar of all the Jewish people to Arvina Shabashmai. To you, Hashem. And, and also help the children of so and so make peace with her and communicate with her, etc. That's called davening for the Shrina. Davening on a higher level that the presence of God in this world should not be obscured, should not be minimized, should not be ignored. That the presence of God in this world should be activated in such a way that there's no longer uh, a, a, a desecration of Hashem's name. The Beis Hamikdash. You need you have stuff with your house. Daven for the Beis Hamikdash. It's a big davening for the Beis Hamikdash. You want to make Aliyah? Yes, Hashem. Everybody should make Aliyah. I know you want us back. Help, help us to come back. Help us to come and help us to find a place. Build your Beis Hamikdash. When you Hashem build your Beis Hamikdash, every single Jew will find their house in Eretz Yisrael. So Rebbe first you build Soba, your base. And I, Rebbe Soba, I'm sorry, I just got a message through that I just wanted to share with you. A family with their children that made Aliyah this year. Um, they are actually on screen somewhere. I can't see exactly, but they're listening to your share in Modian, making challah with their children around the table or making challah for COVID people while listening to your Tehillim share. So wow. thank you. Look at that. I didn't know that. What's their name? Well, it's Nina, so I don't know where Nina, Nina Anders, I'm looking to see where they are. 
Let's see. I'm looking at my screen. Maya? Maya? No? Yeah. We're uh, here. Uh, there we go. Maya. Maya Anders. There you go. Uh, Maya. I thought so because you wrote in Hebrew. Hey, Maya. Welcome. Kola Kavon. Ah, oh, look at the Sadekases. Yeah, because there's no school there's today, right? a amongst them as well. A snow day. You finally made it. You guys came to Israel and, we get, and you gave us a snow day. Oh, good. Okay, I'm going to start. I, I can't. If I start looking at all the people now, I get very distracted because I have an air sign in me. I, I haven't been looking at anybody because I really wanted to finish this pair because I haven't. But give me a five minutes now. I'm gonna, we're going to put all the faces on the screen. We're going to say hi to everybody. Okay, last pasuk. Again, we're saying to us, Hashem is saying these words. Hashem says these words and we are repeating them. So it's as if we're blessing ourselves with Hashem's words. Hashem says, I'm going to give this, I'm going to give you because you trust me, you love me, you want me, you're davening to me. You're trying to expand your prayer and your request to include the, the, the whole Jewish people and to include the presence of God in the world because of that. But not only because of that, because Hashem could give us a freebie. Baruch Yamim, long years, right? Baruch Yamim means long days, means long years. I'm going to fill you up. I'm going to satisfy you with a long life, longevity. And I will show him my salvation, says Hashem. What does that mean? I will show him my salvation. It means, it should say, I will show him his salvation or her salvation, right? It means every time a Jew gets what they need, it's another salvation, so to speak, for Hashem. Hashem loves us so much that whenever he's able, according to the rules that Hashem sent, set up, whenever Hashem is able to, to help us in a, in a revealed way and we, and we consider it a blessing, Hashem says, that's my Yeshua. That's Hashem's salvation. Hashem, so to speak, says this. Now you can see, uh, because Hashem speaks like this to us in such a personal way and in such a personalized way. So you can see what happened to the, to the non-Jewish world when they got very confused by these Tehillims and they made an idol, they made their religion worshiping a person. We understand that Hashem has no physicality. And we have a rule, that the, the rule in Torah is, which means Hashem speaks to us in a way that we can understand and we can relate to. But Hashem has no physicality whatsoever, ever. He never becomes a person. He never allows any physicality to become deified. The Rambam says that the world 2,000 years ago was so messed up and the people were so, the pagans were so immoral that Hashem had to give the pagans, Hashem had to give like a, like a religion that they could somehow begin to think about God, but not yet let go of paganism. And that's what Christianity is. It's a, it's a halfway between paganism and thinking about Hashem. And then the Muslims came and they took it one step less bad and they got rid of all the paganism completely, but they ended up making up uh, laws that were very cruel and that were very anti-Ten Commandments kind of stuff. But Hashem made the religions of the world as step-down transformers for pagans. So we don't have to look at that. We're, we never in any way compromise on anything in the Torah. And here, the fact that Hashem says, I am experiencing a salvation, it doesn't mean that Hashem needs anything at all. As you know, it just means Hashem loves us so much, just like a parent. When a child succeeds, it's as if the, the parent is so happy. That's how Hashem is with us. So when we have a Yeshua, we have a salvation, when, we have, when Hashem is able to help us, He and we know that about people who are in our lives who truly love us. How do you know if somebody truly loves you? If they truly rejoice in your joy. That's how you know. If they rejoice when you're having a good mazel, they truly rejoice without any drop of 
um, jealousy or anything like that, but they're so happy for you. That's a true friend. That's a person who loves you. No competition, no comparisons. And we have to strive to be that person who truly loves and is happy when the other person is indeed successful. So Hashem tells us about himself that he rejoices when we are successful. All right, let's say hi to everybody. Hi, Pauline, and hi, Miriam, and hi, Yaltsvia, and hi, Simon The whole world is on the screen now. And Shoshana Kaplan, and Golda Juliet, and Michal Kalish down the block, and Marcel, and Karen, and Sandra in her car. Drive safely. And Talia Resnick, and Maya, and family making challah for people who need. Kala Kavod, you come to Israel. And Sarah, I just saw you for a second with your baby. And Yehuda, hi, from, hi to Beit Shemesh. And Samantha, and Shoshana, hi to Beit Shemesh. And Paula, and Mrs. Morris. Oh, you're jumping off my screen. Don't jump off the screen. And Sippy, and all the people that I don't know who you are because you have all these code names like phone, iPhone, SE, second generation. I don't know what that means. And Galaxy, and I don't know what that means. Oh, there's Geraldine. Hi, Geraldine. And one second, don't go. And Rosalind and Devorah Dan Danzinger and Julia and Hannah Ziesel coming from the south of Israel. A few southern people here and a few people are on the phone. And hi, Rebecca Schenken and hi, Lisa and Yael Black and Rabbits and Ruthie and hi, Chai Sara, Chai Sara from the other end of town. And who else did I say hello to? I say hi to everybody. Paula, it's good to see your face on. It's so nice when you put your faces on. I think you missed Naomi Toft. I'm looking Naomi in. Toft, there I see you. <laughs> Naomi Toft is in her kitchen, right? You're in your kitchen? Yeah, I know. That's where you are. I always watch you when you're cooking and you're baking and getting your... There's Julia's <laughs> face. Yes, Julia. It's good to see. It's good for us to see each other. We have to know who we are. Ah, delicious women. Thank you so, so much for joining me and learning Tillim together and say these Parakim of Tillim. You know that when you say the Parak of Tillim that we learn together, all of our intentions are coming together. All of our intentions come together so that you don't just say one Parak, you say like lots. Is, is my screen